Hello, this is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Adobe Photoshop Elements, as well as cool tricks and hot tips for Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are looking at cool trick number 24 from our book. This is going to be a two-part tutorial where we create an effect in which a photo in this photo album comes alive, zooms out, fills the video frame, and then becomes motion video. This is kind of the effect we're looking for here. So we've got our photo album. We'll zoom in on one photo. That photo zooms out, fills our video frame, and then becomes live video. Now to create that effect, we need two things, of course. We need the video itself. I'm going to drag this down to the timeline, put it on video track one. The other thing, of course, is a photo of the photo album itself. We'll work with that in just a moment. Now, I brought my video down to video track one, and you notice the project has set up to match the specs of the video, as indicated by the fact that there's no render line above the video clip. You may notice that I'm working in standard definition four by three video. My video is kind of squarish here, right? It's not like the standard videos today where it's 16 by nine. The reason why is I'm going to create video that looks like a photograph and photos are four by three. They're usually not longer than wide. That said, I'm gonna slide this video down the timeline, just get it out of the way for now. And then we'll bring the graphic down to video track one. You'll notice that the graphic goes way beyond the video frame. Two reasons for that. One is that I'm working in a standard definition 720 by 480 video frame, but my graphic is 1000 by 750 pixels. So it's a little bit larger than the video frame. The reasons why, as we justify in the book, is we want a graphic or a photo that's a little bit larger than the video frame, so we have room to do some panning and zooming. We don't want a real large one that's gonna bog down the program, but one optimized to this size is just big enough that we can do a little panning and zooming. Now notice also that before I brought the photo into my project, I went to my preferences under the edit menu on a PC, and on the general page, I unchecked default scale to frame size. If that's checked, the program is going to artificially squeeze your photo down so that it fits inside a video frame. I want my photo to be a little bit larger here so that I can do some animation to it. That said, let's select the photo on the timeline. We'll go over here to Applied Effects here on the toolbar, open up the Motion Effects Properties, and scale it down to about 75%. And then I'm just going to drag it into position here. And this will be my starting shot for my animation. I'm going to move the playhead in just about a second. And then I'm going over here to the Applied Effects panel and clicking on this little stopwatch in the upper right hand corner. This is going to open up the keyframe controller where we do our animation, where we do our animation for all effects, in this case for the motion path effects. I'll click over here on the stopwatch that will toggle on the animation and create my initial keyframe. So everything prior to this keyframe looks like what you see on the screen right now. I'll move the playhead out about a second and then we'll zoom in. We'll zoom into about 90% here on the scale. So we'll go ahead and type in 90 and then I'm going to drag on my uh, picture here to center this photo. Now this is a photo of a couple right now, but I'm going to replace it with my video still, which we'll do in just a moment. And that is pretty much my basic animation. Let's see what we've got here. Close the panel. We'll pull back the playhead. And there is our zoom in to our photo. Now in part two, what we're going to do is we're going to create our still photo based on the video that we pushed off to the right here. And then we're going to create an animation that matches the animation we just created and then have that photo or that still photo zoom out and fill our video frame and become a video that we're going to do in part two.